Hi everyone, thank you. Uh, I, I I won't take too much time. I'll just take maybe a couple of minutes more to introduce uh, the Story Buddy team uh, here this afternoon today. Um, what uh, what what I uh, see here is so Sara and Esther are part of the Story Buddy team. So Sara is the content lead from the Stories of Asia uh, team. Sara is uh, Sara believes in the power of storytelling. Uh, your personal brand and leverage the opportunities in personal and in professional uh, segments of life, right? Uh, Sara has facilitated multiple educational workshops and focus groups uh, for research studies uh, and helps youths uh, improve their skills in media education and public speaking. Um, Sara has also worked with clients uh, under, uh, you know, uh, under Stories of Asia with uh, under Armour, Diego, Great Eastern, uh, these are some of the clients that Sara has worked for. Um, Esther uh, is part of the Story Buddy team. Uh, Esther is part of the Story Buddy team, uh, heading the branding and partnerships of Story Buddy. Uh, she's an all round uh, storyteller who enjoys telling stories. The background in filmmaking and communication. Uh, okay, and that's uh, her passion is uh, finding people, uh, helping people find their voice and uh, help them tell their stories. All right. Um, for Esther has facilitated, again, multiple workshops and interest groups uh, to help business leaders and entrepreneurs uh, developing their personal brand. Uh, with this, uh, I, I hand over the stage today to Sara and Esther. Uh, and before that, Rani, anything you want to mention uh, uh, over to you and then to Sara? No. Esther. Yeah, all good. I won't take too much time. Also, please do share your story, Sara and Esther. Thank you so much, Abhi and Rani. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so how today is going to work is that um, I'll be starting first, um, sharing my workshop, workshop bit. And after that, Esther will be coming in with a story buddy demonstration. And as I understand, at the end of the session, what will be happening is um, people who have used story buddy will be giving a sharing of their experience as well. Right. OK, so. Um, Give me one moment to, all right, and now we're good. Okay, so today the title of the workshop is Power Your Personal Branding and Employer Branding with Storytelling. And we're gonna learn how to stand out as an individual, how to make your company's employer brand shine. So I will skip this part about the introduction since Avi did such a great job of like sharing the introduction already. And I want to tell you that by the end of this workshop, you will understand the power of storytelling and unlocking opportunities for yourself. You will learn effective storytelling and branding techniques that will help you kickstart your branding journey. You'll also learn about corporate storytelling for employer branding, and you'll learn how to leverage on StoryBuddy, our AI storytelling tool to meet your goals. Okay. So for this workshop, it's actually going to be a very interactive one and we need your help right, to take part by being active in the Zoom chat box. Um, so feel free to type ready in the chat if you're ready to take on this workshop. And I'd also like to say hi to Marilyn from Singapore and also Ray, thank you so much for joining. Um, to everybody else who is here, feel free to type the word ready if you are ready to start on this workshop. Awesome. Thank you, Amit Paul. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Avi Nashrik. Hope I got your name right. Awesome. Yes, I see Freddy with a capital letter. We're good to go. All right. So to start and make sure that we can actually help you, tell me very quickly in one line or a few words, what are some pain points you're facing when it comes to storytelling and branding? Or what do you hope to take away? This will help Esther and I both to understand how we can help you. Let's just take a quick minute. One minute timer. Lan, uh, Rani says that she would love to do better storytelling, more impactful. Awesome. We can definitely show you that. And I'm curious if any of um, the participants here are doing employee engagement programs as well uh, or employee advocacy uh, through, through LinkedIn. Does anybody have those initiatives ongoing? Amrit Paul says, sending out the message in an interesting manner. Awesome, we can definitely do that. Okay, let's just give it a couple more seconds. Okay, 
last is learn about how storytelling would improve employer branding. Awesome. We're going to jump into all of those things, you guys. So I'm going to stop the timer here and take you on to the next slide. Okay. We're going to start from personal first and move on to corporate, right? So personally, I was a little bit hesitant when it came to posting online about my thoughts regularly. Um, there was a lot of inertia for me all the time, right? I was always thinking, would what I post be useful or relevant in any way? And talking to a lot of people um, in my network, I realized they also had these concerns. And these kind of concerns are also what your employees and your talents are thinking, right? When it comes to employee advocacy, um, they are afraid. They normally go through a lot of negative self-talk. Right? They think I'm not good enough to share my thoughts online. I'm going to say something dumb. I'm a nobody. What if I say something controversial? That was something one of our clients told us last time. Uh, uh, what if what I say gets no likes? Right? Because like you can put in a lot of effort into a post, but when it comes out, then if no one likes it, that could be quite embarrassing or difficult to take. Right? Um, for some people, um, some some people also say they don't have ideas. And the last one. The most common one is, I have no time for this. Have you guys ever faced negative self-talk like this before? I'm curious. Type yes if it has been a concern uh, for you personally or the people around you. Oh, I see the yeses flooding in. Okay, this is super relevant to everyone. And I want to share some scripts that you can share with your employees and you can use yourself as well when they give you any one of these reasons, right? Because when you talk to yourself, you can talk to yourself in a way that is either hurting or helping. So feel free um, throughout this presentation to take screenshots or if you want, I'll be able to send you the deck after as well, right? So if anyone tells you like, oh, you know, like maybe they're a bit more junior, they're like, I'm not good enough to share my thoughts online. I'm going to say something dumb. Well, the workaround around that is that if they plan their thoughts as they write them, it will be inside them. And I'll show you how to plan your content later on as well in the next couple of slides. Um, if they think they're nobody, well, guess what? So many people online are nobodies, but they're posting anyway. It doesn't mean that you can't post. It doesn't mean you need to be somebody to, to post. What if you say something controversial? So one of our clients actually, um, he has a neck for being a little bit controversial sometimes. Um, and he, he didn't want to post on LinkedIn because he's like, Sarah, if I say this, and I put it online, right? Like you understand what I mean, right? The people I talk to understand what I mean. But if I write it online, some random person who doesn't know me is going to come and say, how could you say that? You know, and then start a whole debate, start a whole conversation. Just like, I don't want to get into that. But it's really a matter of how do you manage your interesting ideas? How do you identify what is controversial and think of how to tame it down? And normally you don't need some special strategy for this. You just need a bit of time and effort to think about how you can reframe your message, right? So that client has started posting online a lot more regularly and it's actually been gaining a lot of traction. And yeah, it's been doing quite well and people don't think he's controversial. They think he's very direct, but they love it. So what if um, something you say gets no likes at all? You can always think about what types of content work. Later on, I'm gonna be sharing with you the. Um, I think the six types of content that you can post online and the different formats that you can look at. So if one doesn't work, you try another one and you keep going on and on. Can you keep trying and experimenting? That's when you'll start to see what actually gets likes and what doesn't get likes. If you think you don't have any ideas, that's not true. Everybody has ideas from their daily experiences, right? Even just attending this workshop or before you attended this workshop, maybe you're having coffee with your colleague and having a chat. Even that could be a post, depending on how you frame it. And lastly, the most common reason, I have no time for this. I think many working professionals know that this is not true. It's more like, I have no priority for this, right? So if you do want to put priority for it, one can always consider putting aside 10 to 15 minutes a day just to do it, right? So think about what story or narrative you are telling yourself. So anytime if you feel a bit of inertia, you feel like, oh my gosh, how am I going to post? Or if you're telling your employees, look, you know, it'd be good if you can be champions of the brand, you know, and you can advocate the brand, you can share about this event you went to, you know, these initiatives, these policies and all of this. And they give you one of these reasons. Now you know what to tell them. All right. Uh, okay. So why should you do storytelling and personal branding in the first place? Why is it important? 
Well, first of all, you can actually build yourself up as a professional and as a thought leader, right? Um, you already are that in your life, one way or the other. Bless you, Mary. Mary, uh, I hope you know that you're um, unmuted and you can feel free to mute yourself. Thank you so much. You know, um, so as I was saying, I guess Mary kind of proved my point. Everyone does have influence. You know, you don't need to be center stage. One way or the other, you do have influence in whatever you do. And it's time to actually put that online in a way that helps you grow yourself, right? Secondly, you gain so much more visibility. You get to meet like-minded people and you get to generate leads for your projects if you're doing anything that requires leads um, or if you're in recruiting right you're um, looking for people if you start posting about hr if you start posting about company culture very soon and if you do it strategically you'll start realizing that you are able to generate leads in the sense that you get people who are candidates who are interested in joining your company right and um, the last reason why you should do story sharing and personal branding, which is my favorite reason, is that it's easier networking for introverts, right? I feel that sometimes I can be quite an introvert in the sense that if I'm always surrounded by people, I actually get a little bit tired. So doing networking on LinkedIn by just writing my own stuff, it's so much easier. All right. So now that we've talked about this, how do you actually decide what to post? Because there's so many different things that are going on, right? So there is a method to this madness and it's a bit of discovery and I'll need you to pull out a pen and a paper, right? We have three activities to do today. So either pull out a pen and paper or open your notes app. Um, and this is if you want to be able to post online in a way that stands out from everyone else. You want to post online and people actually start liking your post, people start sharing your post. Um, I have helped clients who were barely getting any likes, you know, barely getting any comments. And now um, one of them, they recently got over 20,000 impressions on their LinkedIn post, which means that over 20,000 people have seen their post and it's full of comments, right? And what are these comments for him? It's relationship building, it's networking. And that's a super valuable tool for anyone, right? So um, please feel free to grab a pen and paper. We'll be talking about who you are and what you stand for learn about what exactly you can post online and how you can dress up your content to catch attention. Okay, for the first one, let's do a quick like pop quiz, right? It's just for the fun of it. Points to anybody who can guess what these words are. Build your brand using your blank, blank, and blank. I put in some letters there. Uh, let's give it maybe 30 seconds. Uh, until 30 seconds. Can anybody guess what these words might be? I'm not sure if I made it too hard. <laughs> okay, let's give it a 10 more seconds. Okay, I, I think I might have made it a little bit too hard. Oh, awesome, Rani. Texts, thoughts, not sure about the next one. Ah, oh, it's good. Oh, Kyle says talents, values, and thoughts. Very, very close. You got two of them right, Kyle. Good job. Okay. The action, kill. No, not kill. <laughs> Text, talents, and vibes. Amazing, Kwang. It is traits, talents, and values. Oh, you guys are really good. It's good job. Like, um, yes, yes. I see quite a couple of you got quite a few right. So let's jump right into it. What do these actually mean? Right. So make sure you got your paper. Okay. So first of all, um, for traits, traits are basically your characteristics. Right. So what do people say you are? And notice that I say first of all, it's what others, other people say you are. Right. And I want you to write down three words on your paper. What other people say you are? Okay? For example, it could be sunny. It could be helpful. Well read active, inspirational, nurturing, ambitious, all of these can be traits, right? Some of them may even cross over the values, but for now, just feel free to write down three things that are what other people say you are. If you'd like, like, feel free to share some of uh, what you're writing in the chat. Thank you so much, Hamiza. Positive, warm, calm, beautiful. Very nice, Hamiza, thank you. 
and um, Umasa's bold, strong, positive. Okay, you guys have very, very clear personal brands, whether you know it or not. Kyle, I don't believe you are scary. Let's just say you're powerful. That's a positive spin on it. Powerful, perfectionist, strong. Very nice. With your sis, is funny. Sarah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry to cut to cut you off a bit. Uh, this, the uh, the spelling of uh, K Y L. You need to call him Kill because he Kill. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, that's his oh, name. Just that's why you said Kill. Him. Yes. Thanks, Sarah. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, Rani, and thank you, Kill. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, now that everyone's written what others say they are, what do you think you are, or what do you want to be? So, like. Um, Kill mentioned like scary. I, I don't think Kill wants to be known as scary unless his job requires him to be intimidating. So feel free to write three things for yourself that you want to be and you want to represent yourself in online, right? So put this in your list. You should have three from others, three from yourself, and then you circle the ones that you want to keep, right? Circle about um, three to five maximum for the values that you want to keep these will be your traits right and you have to make sure that they align right because you can't be like um you can't be mean and kind you can't be scary and and inspiring at the same time right so the ones that aren't you feel free to cancel them and select about three to four okay last thing i know we're a bit out of time last thing just make sure that whatever you pick uh, helps you with the corporate branding. So far, I'm seeing what everyone is typing in the chat. Thank you so much for that. And I think a lot of things that you are saying helps a lot for your personal branding, right? Even funny. Um, like I see Widya mentioned, she's people say she's funny. And that is so important, especially if you're meeting clients, you're meeting new candidates for the first time, you can build a rapport with people. And that's actually a little superpower for yourself. Awesome. Thank you, you guys. Okay. So this is the first part of three, right? The next one we're going to cover are your talents. Talents are a little bit different. Talents are basically what you're good at, right? So same exercise again. Um, this time, type six things. The first three things are what others say you're good at. The next three things is what you know you're good at or what you want to be good at, right? Feel free to write those. And again, you can shortlist it. You can cut it down to four or five items. The four or five items you want to keep for yourself. Those will be your talents. So for example, you could be good at closing sales, be good at connecting with people, right? Or maybe you've been in an industry for like 15, 17, 20 years, as I saw some of you just now on the, um, on the video that Abhi shared, which means that you're likely to have a deep subject matter expertise. And that's a talent, right? Um, even technical skills like writing and coding, Anybody can try, but if you can do it well, you have a talent, right? Okay, so let's just take a bit of time. Feel free to reflect on these things. And when you're ready, you can share maybe the shortlisted talents that you would like to focus on for your personal branding. So for myself, um, I started my career doing writing, right? So for me, my, my talent, I would consider it's writing, even though it's very basic. I think it's one of those foundational things, uh, one of those foundational skills that I love, right? And I'd love to share it anyway. Okay, I know this, the chat is quite quiet. So maybe let's just give it another one more minute and uh, feel free to finish wrapping up your talents in one minute and feel free to share it in the in the box. You don't have to be obligated to share everything, but ultimately we are building your personal branding that you're putting online, right? So share some of the stuff that you're willing to share with others. Amrit Paul says connecting with people, knowledge and subject matter and presentation. Awesome. You know, there are a lot of people I'm recall, um, on LinkedIn who share, how do you network with people? They give guides. Um, they do guides or tips on like, how do you present? How do you deliver an effective presentation? And stuff like that goes viral. You know, so you have a gold mine there. 
experience in HR fields, connection, networking, speaking in public. Awesome, Rani. Yes, you definitely are good at speaking in public, I can tell. Uma says she would like to focus on writing, communicating well, and building a company of my own. Perfect. These are really, really awesome. Okay, I'm going to move on to our next one because I want to be mindful of time. And we're going to show you soon right, how we can <clears throat> how we can start creating content for them. For now, our final thing, right? So we talked about traits, which are your characteristics. We talked about talents, which is what you are good at. Now it's your values, right? What values and causes do you stand for? So same um, exercise again. I'm going to give you another three more minutes. And these values can be something that can be deeply personal. For example, it could be your faith, you know, um, and maybe that's not something to bring to uh, LinkedIn. If you don't want to, that's fine. But the values of your faith, you know, maybe charity, maybe love, um, maybe uh, kindness. Those are things that you can embody with your personal brand. Kiel says making a difference in many people's lives, pursuing excellence and doing so. Very cool. That means that in the post that you do, um, Kiel, you would think about how can I write posts that show people how to make impact or how can I showcase the impact that I've been making, right? And in the process showing that excellence. Hamiza says committed, persistent, willing to learn. I think those are your traits, right? Um, if I'm not wrong your values committed passion endurance right and then sme engage with people got it yes i think you're typing your traits as well as your talents very nice very nice there is most definitely a market for people who want to talk about smes because smes all want to huddle together um they learn from one another they support one another a lot of times they attend events like this um and there's so much learning and Hamiza with the right hashtags, right? If you go online and you use such a kind of hashtags you can use for SMEs, you're actually well on your way to connecting with people. And there's so much that we can talk about this. Um, uh, and I would love to go in depth, but I'm also mindful that we have like <laughs> maybe 10 minutes left. So I'm going to do my very best to wrap this up effectively while also still leaving time for you guys. Awesome. Widya says coaching. Very cool. What kind of coaching, Widya? I'm curious. Marilyn says leadership, learning, and making an impact. Beautiful. Yes. Rani says personal service responsibility. Ah, it's a small version of CSR. It's very cool. I think that's a good niche because um, at least me, I'm, I'm a layman in this area. I haven't heard about personal service responsibility. So when you do speak out about something that not many people know about and you talk about it consistently, you can very quickly establish yourself as a thought leader. Life coaching. Thank you, Adia. All right. I'm going to end this a little bit early since I see a lot of comments coming in. And I'd like you to basically note whatever you have on your paper, right? So by now you should have a list of your traits, a list of your talents, and a list of your values. If I asked you to write something and I asked you to take on the persona of someone who is very truthful, believes in love, and wants to make a difference in people's lives, it's very different from a person who is focused on leadership and learning, you know, and maybe SMEs, for example, right? So whatever you list, these are all the attributes of your personality in various keywords. So you can pick and choose, right? And when you put yourself online and you build this persona with these keywords, now when people think of you, they will remember you for being the person who does life coaching. They will remember you for the person who always talks about teamwork and engagement. They will remember you on being that person who is always proactive and always connects with new people, right? So this was a very quick crash session. Feel free to go uh, reflect on this some more. And if you really want to get very specific and very impactful, shortlist only three things out of all the traits and talents and values. And those three keywords will be who you are.